it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this tunnel card. So this is the first one I've made playing with the dies from the Paper Discovery Kit, but you can make this with your own dies and I've made quite a few tunnel cards and I'll share the playlist up here. So if you want to get some more inspiration, check out those ones because I've done some really nice like, underwater scenes and I think I've done that. one of them was the Christmas Nativity. There's the mermaid, there's a few different variations, so, so check it out. But this one here is actually one of the cards that are shown in the booklet that you get, so it's one of the inspiration cards. And I've played around and I always like to kind of add my little twist on it, so I've changed the colours. I'm actually not using any of the cardstock from the kit apart from the background piece there. But it's a concertina fold, it's six by six, and then you just fold the whole thing flat and it will fit into your envelope. So, and then it just kind of pops back up, but it's so cute. I'm gonna, like I said, there's a few things I wanna change in this. I think I'm gonna change the color of the little wishing well there. I'm not too keen on the darker gray. I prefer maybe brown, so like a more of a brick color. So we'll play around anyway. But I love the little toadstools and the frog. There's little vellum, like um, dragonflies, and we've got the bigger stamped ones, the butterfly, I've put glossy accents on everything. And I've just layered up lots of this here, so it just looks like you're, you're looking through like a little, almost like a badger's like, badger set or something, and he's kind of poking his head out and this is his view or something like that. I don't know, that's, you know, looking out through a hole and you see this beautiful day ahead of you. So um, yeah, that's what I've got from this. <laughs> and um, I'm not too keen, I was playing around with some doodling, I just wanted to frame that. And that's one of the things I'm gonna do with the next one is I, I struggle to just have a whole color on the front of things. I always have to try and mat somewhere and add a layer or something. So that's what I'm gonna do with the next one. But you can, you know, by all means do, it you know die cut into the the top piece there as I have done and um, it's just my own personal preference and then on the back is where you will write your um, message and stamp and everything I'm going to actually end up keep this I'm going to keep this for myself I'm just going to display this in my craft room and the next one I will make to use so what you're going to need like I said you don't need this but this is what I'm using so those of you that do have the kits I know lots of you do it's the paper discovery kit so this is kit four and I'm using the, mainly the dies, because like I said, I didn't choose, yeah, the dies and the stamps. I haven't used any of the cardstock. So these are the dies that you get, really lovely. It's not until you start using them, especially this one. This is absolutely beautiful when it, it cuts into the cardstock. So I'm gonna use that one. Then to create the card, the concertina, you can use this here. So in the booklet, I'll show you the one that I've got my inspiration from, it's this one here. Okay, so Olga's done it in whites and greys and vellums and it's very soft. I've gone for obviously something much, much brighter and I've used a lot of the stamps in this one, whereas these are all the die cuts, the moon, they've used the little picket fence there as well. But to make it, she uses the lines here, these are your guides to create that fold. So if you've got this and you wanna go and follow those, then that's all there explained for you, but I'm gonna show you how to do it with your school board. And then they are the stamps. So I've used all of these ones, really nice toadstool images, super cute little frog there, and then the butterflies there and there. And then you've got some really nice sentiments. Oh, and the dragonfly. Love the willow there as well. I will be using that in another project. So I'm gonna pop all this back in there. I might go back to the paper in a bit if I do decide to use that background piece again. So before I started filming, I went ahead and coloured all of my stamped images. I've, this time I'm doing a lot more toadstools as well. I wanna fill it with even more because I think the color on those just really stands out. And then I'll add the glossy accents right at the very end. And then I went ahead and just die cut all of these different sprigs in all of the greens that I'm using. Okay, so again, you'll see exactly what I mean by all that in a moment. And then I've done my sentiment. This one's gonna be hoping you find strength with each new day. So what I've got here to make the front of the concertina. So you'll see I am constructing mine slightly different. I think the first one, maybe that one. No, I'm doing it the other way around. No, it probably is the same anyway. So you'll need a piece of 12 by six cardstock. And then along each side, you wanna score at half an inch, one inch, one and a half, two, two and a half and three. I think the met the the um, concertina lines on that embossing folder. I think they're one centimeter, so it's just slightly different. And then flip it around and do it again the same. So half an inch, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, and three. 
Okay, now I'm not going to fold these yet because I want to run it through my die machine and this will go through your standard die machines because it's their six inch width so you don't need a, a larger one for this. So now this is where I'm going to change it up a little bit because on the front of this one here I had this very large one here. Okay, you can see there, that's where that one went in. So if you want to go ahead and just cut that straight in this six by six square in the center, run it through your die machine. That's what I've done to create that. And then all these other ones I'm gonna to explain to you separately. But I think with the first one, I'm gonna, mm, see this is where, I, because I wanna do it through two pieces of cardstock. I wanna cut through this one and I'm gonna do this green. Then I'm gonna have the lighter green then the darker one then end again with that one or I may end with the pattern paper but that's what I'm going to do here so I want to have this piece which I've cut down to five and three quarters let me just check yeah I've got this one smaller so this is five and three quarters squared and it's going to sit in that six by six square with that border and for me I prefer that it just, it's just, I think it's down to just the style that I make cards. I like a border. And with that one not having it, I just, I don't know. It's just bugging me. So, but what I want to do is obviously cut this through both pieces. So I think it will go. So what I'm going to do, I might just have to put a shim and run it through a few times. So I'm going to stick this green directly onto here. And um, and then I'm going to die cut that, that die. So I'm going to, yeah, create a slightly different look with this one. And um, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so just lay this one down on here. So yeah, I'm going for a bit of a enchanted woodland. I guess that's the style I'm going for. So it's very whimsical, which is Olga's style. And um, it certainly, you know, comes across with these dies here. Right, so that's now stuck down. So I'm now going to die cut this through both of these layers. Like I said, it should work okay. These are pretty strong. In fact, when I ran them through before, they cut, you know, straight through. So I'm gonna go and get this die cut first. Okay, so you would have seen, I've changed my mind and gone back to the original. <laughs> I've ran it through quite a few times. I have got a little bit of marking here. Can you just kind of see that? But I can cover that, so I'm not too worried. So it's actually come through really well. Just a little bit of a, the whole thing's cut. It just needs a little bit of help. Okay, and keep this because there's more inspiration in the book to you know um, layer these up and make that into a card as well so but there so you're creating your first aperture so like I said you can use any dies you know I've done ones with rectangles ovals all kinds of things but now we've got that opening so then we can now concertina fold so you want to start from the inside ones there and they're both going to become mountain folds and then you're going to concertina fold so then it'd be a valley and a mountain and another valley, mountain, ending with a valley. We're going to attach the back piece separate. So you will have one, two, three mountains, and then one, two, three valleys, and then this one will end up becoming a, a final mountain. Okay, so again, do that on this. Okay, so now you can see we've started to get our card coming together there. So we will do the back in a minute because we will attach that on last. So now I want to go and die cut these other pieces here. So I'm going to do this one and the dark one. I'm not sure about that one because that may be my back piece. So then I'm using this die. So you you know any kind of decorative aperture dies that you might have or you can you know use just a simple circle and then grab all of your leaf and foliage kind of dies and just layer them all up around it to create that full effect because these here are all separate ones just stuck behind this front piece and so on so you know there's there's lots of ways to do that so I'm going to do this one and die cut that piece and then this one with this piece now these pieces here will measure you want it to be five and seven eighths of an inch by six so it will be the full six inch height but you want it to come in just slightly because of the concertina folds it will actually push the card in slightly so just bringing it in that five and seven eighths will be better so two pieces of that size again everything will be listed in my blog but I'm now going to run these through my machine and you just want to make sure that it's in the center 
or as close as because you want everything to kind of line up and each one's going to be different so I'm going to die cut this one so it's like that way and then the next one on the other piece of card will be like that way you can turn the card as well but you want it to you don't want them to all line up you want them to all be all over the place really so I'm going to do that one let's go there okay so I'm going to die cut both of those Okay, so I'll cut those both out. You can see when you start layering them up. I'm going to have it that way, I think, though, with the darker behind. So next you want to start sticking them into here, and then we'll put, like I said, I think it's easier to put the back on last and stick these in. Now, they're going to be slightly shorter, but what it should allow you is it means that when it folds flat, yeah, you won't get any buckling. See, it all folds, fold, folds nice and flat. You want to decide, you know, what order you want them in. So I want this lighter green at the front and then the darker green at the back. So it's going in the, you've got your first valley here, your second valley, your third valley. I'm going in the second one here. You can put it right in the front if you want. I'll show you how that looks. It will then put it right up to it. Still gives a really great result. So, you know, it's entirely up to you with whatever you're cutting out, but I am gonna set it back one. And all I'm gonna do is use my liquid glue and just put a thin bead just along here. If you want to add it into the concertina fold itself, you can, but I think this is enough. Just a thin, thin amount there. And then just pop it inside and over the other side. And then just squeeze it down flat. Okay, and if you've got any white there that you might not like, see I've got a, like a line there, I've got all these stamped pieces, I've got all this to stick in yet, and you can cover all that stuff up completely. So next, you want to decide, you know, if you want to move it around, the pattern. Now I think that's perfect actually, so again, this is the Centura Pearl, it's gorgeous, really nice cardstock. So I'm just going to run again, very thin amount on those edges there, and then just pop it in. The last one, like so, and then bring that down. If when you fold it flat you are getting any buckling, I've got a little bit there but that will still go in an envelope, then you want to trim this piece, you know, these two here. So I said they were, what was it, five and seven eighths by six. And, um, you know, maybe you want to do it five and three quarters by six. You just, you've got that half inch of the concertina piece, you've got plenty for the card to stick to, you know, so it can afford to be a little bit shorter and not to ruin the card and, or anything like that. Okay, lastly, you want a piece of six by six, and this is just going to stick. You're going to run glue down these sides here, and it's going to stick onto that and finish the card. So this is where you want to decide what you want to have on that. You might want to keep it, you know, white in my case, and stamp your sentiment there you know that would look really nice I'm tempted to keep it white because I've got all of these lovely things here and I think they will really stand out even more against the white background so I think I'm gonna yeah I think I am I'm gonna stick with the white you watch I'll regret it later but there's so many butterflies and bits and pieces that we can add to it so now I'm going to add glue to these two back pa um, panels here because you're going to stick it onto all of that and then we will cut a separate piece for you to stamp and write your message on. You can still write on the back of this, you know, it's going to be flat, but you might want to write something later. You might not know who you're giving this to yet, so you can always do that bit, you know, later on. So I've got a bit of black there, let's just flip that over. So you're just going to line it up. And that will bring it all into its six by six shape once you add this back on. So you might need to pull them Pull them in a little bit because, you know, that's how it should be and fold it all flat and you can see there it will all line up. Okay, so once that's stuck really well then I can kind of pull the concertina apart a bit more. In fact I can do now, just to give it a bit more shape. But now you get to appreciate all that dimension. It's so lovely, really, really like these. So now it's just down to decoration. So I, how many times did I just say so? <laughs> okay, let's try that one instead, okay. See what I mean? You can pop something in the middle there 
and that's a nice card on its own you know do a few bits and pieces around here you could have your dragonfly on the outside along with the butterflies and the frog and everything but what I want to start doing now is filling it up even more with all of these pieces so I'm going to put a lot of this on high speed I'll just talk you through kind of what I'm doing first but I want to kind of stick them against the opposite colors so this is that lovely you know olive green but I'm going to stick it right down in the back one behind that darker green just so all the green colors all start mixing together and um, it almost looks a little bit like a swamp but I think these could work as seaweed you know there's no reason and you could also turn them up that way and have like a group of them together and you see what I mean it looks like the seaweed growing up from the the bottom of the seabed so you know think of other ways to use it you might not have butterfly dyes or this might not be your thing but you might really like the underwater scenes then you can certainly do that as well so yeah you want to go in behind these kind of layers and um, you know, every time lay it all down flat just so you're making sure it's always going to fit back in your envelope. But yeah, I'm just going to stick them behind. I've got these ones here so I can pop, you know, these here and maybe, you know, take away from some of this blank space. I'm aware I've got a bit of a mark there or maybe it's more at the top now. But once I attach my sentiment and like I said, I've got my toadstools, I could put a few of them on the outside because I've got more of them. So yeah, I'm going to start playing around with all of that and then I will be back. So this is what I've done and I adore it. I just want to go there now and have a picnic because it just looks so, so pretty. But now I'm finding I am unsure about the white background. So this is one of the backgrounds you get and it's, I think it's, no, she didn't use this one. She does use it obviously on other cards like this, but she uses the blue one, but you can slide it in, it fits perfectly. And that's the one that I used there. So you can just see it all in the background, but I don't think I'm going to do the wishing well with this one because I just, I don't know, I just really like it. But I think I'm also going to look to see if I've got any kind of like sky sky effect background papers because my sentiment's going to go up there. Probably I might do it on a bit of a side angle like that. I think that looks really cute. And then I've got the dragonfly and the butterfly to go in the middle. I adore it. I'm absolutely in love with it. I really am. I just want to make sure I get this back piece exact so I'm going to come back when I have um, decided what I will do though is I'm going to stick get the sentiment stuck down I'm going to use a foam pad and just pop it in the middle there and then that will cover that little bit of or just disguise that marking that's there like so there we go and then you can see yeah oh, I don't know right I'll be back <laughs> Okay, so I've been having a play around and I found this paper here. It's got that kind of cloud-like pattern, the blue and like greeny colours, so it works well as a sky. So obviously now I'm adding this later and I did say before you stick the white piece down on the back, if you want that to be, you know, patterned or stamped or anything, you need to do that before you stick it down. So, you know, I can't stick that against there now, so I'm going to trim mine. That's purely because, you know, I, I've changed my mind basically, so whatever that piece is there you want to stick your pattern paper onto it as well so I'm just going to take off oh, just drop me glue I'm going to take off because it's half an inch so it's about an inch I'm going to just cut mine to just over make sure I'm cutting on the right side yeah just over let's do just over five and see if that will slide in between those two white pieces no a little bit more so it is it's going to be five if not just under this is only if you change your mind like me yeah there we go so see now mine slides between the two white pieces there that are stuck down and it looks it finished you know it's got a nice finish to it you can see now it slides against that perfectly so I'm going to stick that one in there and then what I've gone ahead and done is actually went back into the kit and they've got the embossing folder so I'm 
I've gone and embossed this piece here which is this centre section and then you just cut against the curve there and it's going to look like rolling hills in the background so that's what I'm going to use but it also cut this piece so if you do have it there's your concertina so that's how it looks and then you would just fold you know each of those to give you the side of the card as they show you in the instructions. So it's a really handy embossing folder for that kind of thing if you know you don't want to do the scoring yourself you've got it there as well. Okay so that's that so what I'm going to do before I stick the blue piece down is I'm going to stick this onto the back and I'll have to trim a little bit off. Oh let's cut into that a bit further there. That's okay I can cut that end off. So I'm just going to just lightly kind of tack it down. If I stick to this end now and then I don't have to trim both sides like so. In fact, I'll come over a little bit. There we go. And I'll just flip that over and just trim off that one. And that one. Okay, and then I'm just going to add glue onto the back of all of this and stick it into the card. And then I just need to add the butterfly and the dragonfly and I'm done. Okay, so I've stuck that in there. You can see the rolling heels in the background. I think it just gives something more to the card. And then you could, you know, stamp some trees on there, do a lot more. But there's so much going on. I think I just need to remember when to stop because it's quite easy, especially with these kind of cards to just keep adding and adding to it, which, you know, I love. So I'm just going to stick that one just there. I've only put it on the body and then this one here. Probably might use my gel glue, actually. I might just change that in a second, just so it keeps its dimension, although it's going to get flattened anyway, so don't worry too much. Like so. Isn't it cute? So then you can cut a piece of, if you want to do like a green piece, so that's five and three quarters by five and three quarters, stick it on the back. And then when you do decide who you're going to give it to, cut a piece of five and a half, no, yeah, five and a half by five and a half in white, stamp it, write your message, and then stick that, and then you'll have a nice green border. I'll put those measurements in my blog. I'm not going to do mine now because, yeah, I'll just leave that until I need to. But what I am going to do is, with the glossy accents, and I'm going to go over all of the toadstools and just all of the little um, creatures really. Why is that got blocked? I've literally just used it as the only thing with this is it can very quickly block. There we go. Right, so yeah, I'm just going to go over all this just to give it that nice shine. Okay, so there it is. If I get it to catch the light, you can see all that lovely dimension. And I might also add a few Nouveau drops as well. You'll see that in the photo. So I'm going to let this dry now and stop for the minute because it's very easy to get carried away. But I think it's beautiful. I love how it's come together. I'm definitely loving this one more with this white frame. Okay, but it's, you know, each to their own. This one's still nice, but it's just something for me, I prefer a frame. <laughs> it's just uh, just my style. But there again is that one. And also with the little wishing well there, which is a really nice addition. It's a lovely die. I'll definitely be using it a bit more. But uh, yeah, there you have it. And little frog, I think he's so cute. So I hope you've enjoyed this shadow box tutorial. Do check out the playlist, like I said, for more inspiration, different themes, different colors and all that kind of thing. Also, if you do make yours quite bulky and you're a bit worried it's not to go into your six by six envelope they do fit but i do have the six by six box envelope and i'll link that one up here as well because that one will obviously work as well so thank you for watching and i'll be back again soon with another tutorial bye